Hello everyone, welcome back. In this particular video, we're going to focus on uh, an intramolecular Claisen condensation. This reaction is also called the Dequin cyclization. Now this reaction is applicable for compounds that contain more than one ester group in them. So more than one ester functionality. So now what that also means is since we're talking about ester groups, these are usually at the ends of a carbon chain. So I have an example of a molecule here. So when you look at this molecule here, <coughs> this is uh, an ester. In fact, it's a diester of a carboxylic acid with five and six carbons. So it is the diester of hexane dioic acid, okay? So it's a, a diester of a six carbon dicarboxylic acid. When you react this uh, diester with sodium uh, ethoxide as a base, and again, since this is related to the Claisen condensation, we are using a base that matches with the alcohol portion of the diester, and followed by an acidic workup, you get a compound. Now this, Compound, it's cyclic because we're starting with a diester, but overall, when you look at it, this is still a beta keto ester. So when you start from the ester, there is a keto group on the beta carbon. So that tells us that mechanistically, this should be similar to a Claisen condensation reaction. So let's look at the mechanism of this reaction, how this reaction works. Okay, so because this is a, this is related to the Claisen condensation, and it involves the use of a base in the first step. What that means is there is an enolate involved in the reaction. We must make an enolate at some point. Now, as far as the starting ester is concerned, let me draw it again for the purposes of our mechanism here. So as far as the starting ester is concerned, uh, this is a symmetrical molecule. There is symmetry in this molecule. And there are two alpha carbons, okay? This is a molecule with two alpha carbons. Uh, carbon five is alpha to the ester at carbon six. And carbon two is alpha to the ester at carbon one, which means when this uh, diester reacts with the base, you can in principle make uh, two enolates, okay? And again, the formation of the enolate is not that favored. So uh, the equilibrium does not favor the enolate formation. And so in this particular case, it really doesn't matter which alpha hydrogen we pick. Uh, we can go ahead and deprotonate the alpha carbon at, sorry, the alpha hydrogen at carbon number five. When that happens, we're going to make the enolate, electrons would go there, and that would give us the enolate, which is this molecule here, four, five, six, single bond, oxygen with a negative charge, OET, double bond there, so that's six, five, four, three, two, and then one. Now, if we made the enolate at carbon number two, that would give us the same result over here, okay? So we made this enolate. And then when the enolate is formed, this enolate is a carbon nucleophile. So as the lone pair comes down, the pi bond can go and attack carbon one. So carbon five is the alpha carbon. And essentially we are making a bond between the fifth carbon and the first carbon. So one, two, three, four, five. That would give us a six membered ring. Okay. So what we will get from this, let me draw it here. What we're going to get from this is going to be a five-membered ring. And I'm just going to say that this is carbon five. And we have 
four, three, two, and one. So carbon five attacked carbon one. So we have a bond between five and one. On carbon five, we should have carbon six connected to it. So that's six. Six should have a double bond and there should be an OET. So there's an ester group. Carbon six is an ester carbon or an acyl carbon with an ester group. And carbon one, because this is carbon one was the acyl carbon, the double bond opens up. So we have a tetrahedral intermediate at carbon one. So we get O minus. And on one, we have OET. So one has the oxygen with the negative charge and it has the OET, the ethoxy group. And so what we make here is the tetrahedral intermediate. Now this tetrahedral intermediate can collapse and so the lone pair on the oxygen comes down and the OET is going to get kicked out. And that's going to give us five, one, two, three, four. On carbon number one, we now have a double bond. Okay, we got the double bond back. And on carbon five, we have a double bond O and OET. So we got the product. So essentially, if you look at it, we made the beta keto ester here. And this is the alpha carbon. This is the beta carbon relative to the ester. We have one more alpha hydrogen here. Okay, there were two alpha hydrogens on carbon five. We used one in the first step. We still have one more alpha hydrogen left here. Uh, and uh, when this has step happened, we also made some ethoxide that was kicked out. That was the leaving group. So now the ethoxide can go and deprotonate that alpha hydrogen and electrons would end up on the alpha carbon. So that would be the step that would push this equilibrium towards the product. So that what we get is carbon one has double bond O, three, four, five, C double bond O, OET. Okay, so these are all oxygens there. And we have a negative charge on carbon number five, which is our alpha carbon and the beta carbon is that carbon one. And so that's everything happening in the first step. And so then finally, when we do <coughs> the acidification, we can use acid to protonate it. So the alpha carbon or the enolate gets protonated. So this is basically the enolate of beta keto ester. So when we add acid, which is the second step here, the alpha carbon gets protonated. And so we get our product that way, which is the beta keto ester. So now we have a hydrogen here. That's our alpha carbon. That's our beta carbon. So that's how we get the beta keto ester product. So again, we make the beta keto ester product here. So that's the mechanism for the formation of this cyclic beta keto ester. Now, important thing to remember in this Dequin cyclization is that very similar to the aldol reaction, five and six membered rings are favored, okay? So when you have several alpha hydrogens or uh, alpha hydrogens that can be deprotonated to give you enolates, you have to look for the product and you have to look for how big would be the size of the ring here. 
So five-membered rings and six-membered rings are usually the preferred products from these reactions. That's one important thing to keep in mind as you uh, explore this reaction and you try to work on some problems. I hope you like the discussion on how these cyclic beta-ketoester products are formed through our deep cyclization. Bye.